Oh, okay. So I just said. <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. We're back with another session episode live stream NX Office Hours, uh, where we talk about NX, we talk about the community, we talk about fun projects. And today um, is a very exciting episode that I'm uh, interested to be a part of because I've been trying to, I've been, I've been lurking on this project for a long time and now I finally get the author maintainer idea behind the project uh, on the show. Um, so you've seen me before, Brandon, Brandon T. Roberts on Twitter. You can follow me there. You see our handles right there at the bottom. But today I have with me uh, Trung. So you want to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself so for the people who may not know who you are? Sure. Thank you, Brandon, for the uh, invitation for me to the show today. Um, very, like, this is my pleasure to be in, on NX Office Hour. Uh, my name is Chung. I'm uh, originally from Vietnam and currently living in Singapore. Working as a lead front-end engineer in the company called Cactify. So it's like a, a cryptocurrency startup. Ooh, Singapore. Okay. Yeah. It's like we built a platform. We wanted to, uh, you know, let the user earn cash flow with <laughs> crypto. <So laughs> if you wanted to, you know, look into it. Uh, feel free. Um, I uh, built some um, like application, like okay, open source application with Angular. So Spotify was the newest. Mm -hmm. I used to build the uh, Jira clone, which like the debut. I think it's kind of cool, but uh, when I look back, maybe I didn't really like the code there. <laughs> <laughs> I also built a touch it. Uh, it's, it's still working. I still sometimes play it. So uh, you can look into my GitHub to, to, to see more. Um, I organized the Angular Singapore and they are still organizing some more meetup in the upcoming month and uh, a part of the uh, administrator team of Angular Vietnam. We do some events and uh, support the community, just growing up the community more in Vietnam. Yeah, I think, yeah, basically that's for me. Okay, very, very cool. You you seem to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff. I didn't even know about the, the Angular Singapore and the, the rest of it, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, like I said, the main, one of the, we could talk about the, the other things that you mentioned also, like the Jira clone and the uh, Angular Spotify, but we wanted to talk about mainly the Angular Spotify also to see how that how that project came to be, um, and kind of some of because you we talked a little bit off off air before you came on about like how you used NX and everything for that so uh, we can get into that also um, so yeah the let's let's talk about the Jira the Jira clone first because you haven't this is like you said you built these projects kind of from scratch and from like existing things that are out there so like what mode on the Jira clone side before we get into the angle of Spotify what kind of motivated you to kind of start building these open source clones of these existing uh, apps that are out there um, thanks it's an interesting question um, I think one of the first reason I start with Jira clone um, with angler because I didn't really see a lot of uh, cool, I mean, not cool, but like uh, a, a larger uh, example with, with Angular. So, mm -hmm. of course, when you start with NGX, you have, you know, an example of a to-do list and there's a book, uh, there's an example that you guys was building, I saw it. Mm -hmm. But I want to see a bit more of it, like a, a bigger, bigger one. And uh, Jira was one of the tools we are using before. and. Um, my boss loves Jira, to be honest. So, <laughs> oh, it's like really? when, when we yeah when we start to build any kind of um, UI component, he will like tell me like how Jira build it. Maybe we just follow Jira. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, so anytime, <laughs> anytime something new comes up, they just pull out Jira as like the example. Like let's let's put let's put can we make this like Jira? That's maybe yeah. the first time I've heard uh, someone use Jira as the. I guess the example of something to, uh, to reference. So that's, yeah, that's pretty I, interesting. Obviously, we we also using uh, Gmail and and other stuff. But Jira because we are using it every day and somehow the UI and the UI was kind of cool. It's easy to follow. Um, so I wanted to you know have some some kind of um, have the drag and drop feeling like Jira mm -hmm. because the way they do it very smoothly and uh, we all know that Jira was using React. 
So when I was looking for the same solution, I couldn't find um, an Angular version because they have that G React Jira clone, but there's no Angular uh, mm -hmm. like corresponding version. So yeah, well, that's uh, just a few reasons I wanted to start uh, the um, um, Jira clone one. And at the same time, uh, in Angular Vietnam, we start a series called 100 Day of Angular. So that's my friend mm -hmm. Cho. I mean, he just joined uh, Nawa, I think, it's just a few days. Yeah, last, last week. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's doing last and, week, uh, yep. And has another friend there. Uh, so we start a series, and I think maybe it's kind of interesting to put all of the, uh, uh, maybe like the follow up of Jira clone into the series as well. So mm -hmm. the guy can start a real world project. But it's just the idea because. Up until now, I think I just do like two tutorial for this <laughs> series, for Jira Club. <laughs> yeah, the, that is something that I, I don't know if you do this also, but I, I'm assuming that you do since this kind of prompted you to build the, start, <clears throat> start with the Jira clone and then the Angular one is, I go through this phase where I'm like looking on GitHub for like Angular open source projects and things that aren't uh, just to-do lists or aren't counters or things like that to try to give some more, um, like you said, some more real world examples mm -hmm. out there. And I know there are some out there, but like keeping those up to date, I know a bit, I know it's a challenge, even just in open source in general, keeping those examples up to date or constantly like adding things to those. But yeah, I, I go, like I said, I go through this sometimes where I'm like, I need a good Angular example that I can point people to, or mm. even a good Angular NGRX example that's not something that I may have built myself, or something that I actively maintain, so people have a good reference there. Uh, so definitely cool that you're you kind of done that a couple of times uh, through done the, gone through that a couple of times. So the the Jira clone, did you can you kind of talk about? I'll see if I'm going to bring up the I want to talk and type at the same time, but uh, it's the sure. Angular Jira. <laughs> Live Googling. You got to love it. I mean, I never look for it. Let's see if we can look for it. Oh, it's an Angular Jira clone. Oh, okay. The first one. Nice. Yeah. So you got, you got, you definitely got the SEO. <laughs> <laughs> the, the SEO <laughs> on lock on the Angular Jira uh, clone here. Uh, so yeah, I see you have. Um, I think he's doing something a little different on this one. Can you talk about like the stack that you used uh, for this one? Oh, and that don't let me forget to talk about GraphQL because we talked about I talked about that oh. on Twitter also. Yeah, about okay. not having many GraphQL examples out here, and I see that you have that in uh, in I, here. I, I, so. on, yeah, I mean it's on another branch. So um, what you're looking at is the master, and it is just the first um, phase. Um, so on the first phase was very basic. It's like you see, I just do two folder, which is back end and front end. It's not like even a, a mono repo kind of a structure. It's just you know mm -hmm. putting everything in in places. Um, so the first one was basically just like I have a data storing on a JSON file. I put it into like Heroku at the beginning. Heroku, Heroku, mm -hmm. yeah, Heroku, and then I just fetch the data from the back end and then just display it. There's no authentication, nothing. It just some cool <laughs> UI on, on the screen, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I was using, yeah, you just scroll out, you see there's Akita, was, I never tried it. I mm -hmm. use NGX and NGXS, but never Akita. So it is because it is just a side project, so I start to use Akita and then a bit of NGDraw for some kind of component and uh, start to use Tailwind CLS. Yeah, basically that's a, that's a stack. Um, GraphQL, I think, is going to be on the other branches you can look into and you see the gql look for gql a uh, feature gql right below yeah that's the one okay cool yep so that is like my friend cho was helping me a lot at the beginning um he was setting up the the nx structure so it is nx basically so mm -hmm. i know nx from this this point but i didn't add a lot more code so cho was the one who set up with netjs as a backend mm -hmm. uh, we just Take the whole application. So, so he basically came in and was like, hey, you need to not use, well, I, are you still using like the JSON? Well, in the beginning, did you switch over to using the, uh, 
the Nest.js with like a database or are you still still kept using the like the JSON file for the like the storage? Uh, at the moment, it's still a JSON file, the one that is deploying. Um, the jQuery L is the proper one. We have the okay. seeding data at the beginning and you know, we can deploy it to Mongo. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the end, uh, we try, but <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just never get into the point that we can show to people. But I think um, Show will spend a lot of effort into these uh, branches. I also like, bring the, the migrate the, the Angular application over to Annex as well. But we didn't really break it down into library and stuff. It just make it work at the beginning. Um, yeah, I see. Yeah, so yep. like you mentioned, the the initial one for the Jira is more of a traditional Angular CLI, CLI yep. yeah, that's application. Fine. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, so yeah, okay. We have time to finish the uh, JQL thing. <laughs> one. <laughs> There's always. <laughs> This is the thing about doing now. it in the front, yeah, doing things out in the open. There is always no, still no lack of, no shortage of things to, to do, even if you have, like you and like I said, Charles have been on it too, uh, trying to get that, even the, the GraphQL part of that uh, finished up. But yeah, we'll see. You, you guess you're up to two projects now, so we'll see how that one, how that one goes there. And we'll, ch we'll check back on that one at, sure. a, at, a, at another time to, uh, see about that so so yeah we talked about the Jira one you you kind of mentioned how that one was uh, you kind of progressed with that one where you were using a like a JSON file and then you moved to GraphQL and uh, actual database and everything and so then you go down that path now you're on the new path of the angular Spotify app so you want to talk about kind of like at a either you can talk or share like at like at a high level of what what made you want to do that one or move on to that one or um, but was it another just like learning opportunity or what did you do there? Oh, okay, sure. Um, maybe I need to. I, I mean, let me share the screen quickly so okay. if uh, people have never seen Spotify, they know what it is look like. Uh, maybe it's either. So probably you can edit yeah, the stream so. Yeah, I'll add you here. Sure. Uh, there you go. And I will yeah, add. Sure. I just pasted a link to the um, the Jira clone in the chat there, and we'll also add that to the show notes later, so people can check Thank that out. Thank you Thanks so much. So basically, Spotify was like I deployed to Spotify dot. Maybe that's very similar, but um, usually, uh, I mean, it's even the first time you you're using Spotify, so you give type Spotify dot chunk eighteen, which is I mean, it's silly, but <laughs> it's been everywhere, so I, I don't mm -hmm. dare to change it. Uh, you can't change it at this point. You got too many. Uh, you got too many eyes on it, unless you yeah. set up some kind of redirects or something. But yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so it will just redirect directly immediately to Spotify itself and ask for the permission. Um, mm -hmm. I need to um, like how like I need to have your consent that. Uh, the Spotify Angular Spotify we need some of your data just to play music. We don't really do anything else with it. But basically, when you click the agree button here, it could be very um, you know dangerous because if the app is intending to store your data somewhere else, mm -hmm. they can basically. So I click agree and then it just give me back to the uh, main uh, UI of the app. Okay, so and the Spotify API itself is just something you can just sign up to um, get access, or as you have to register your application to be able to uh, authenticate with. Yeah, Angular. so I need to uh, create a new application into the dashboard of the developer dashboard of Spotify. They mm -hmm. give me some kind of ID, and then when I'm doing the uh, redirecting, I put my F ID into the UI or something. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the how the process, and then when I got the data, I'll just display it on the UI. So it is just basically it's your data from Spotify, mm -hmm. and I just using it to to render it with you know uh, some kind of uh, component with Angular, and the uh, you can play the the song like like usual. I add in the visualizer. You haven't seen it before. That is something that I, I like to, to talk about because <laughs> Yeah. We wanna see all the all the fun stuff. One of the, the reasons why I, I build it, um 
and uh, recently there's a lot of uh, feature from the community so this one is the search one here it's coming from the community so there's a the guy named Nikos he was just adding a lot more PR to, to Spotify mm -hmm. report which is really helpful thanks Nikos so let's say I look for Taylor Swift and then it's just using the same API from Spotify I mean there's a lot of the API that you can use you can like add the song into the playlist you can you know, remove the song you can add it to the queue there's a lot more we just need to spend more time into it and really mm -hmm. hammer it so it will be behave like Spotify um, so that is how the, the app look like the reason I build it again um, more like um, the learning tool for me that's the first reason and I have the glance at Annex and because Cho was using Annex all the time mm -hmm. and I never really got into Annex yet so I think you know maybe I start I should start to look into Annex and really build something with it so Jira clone was the, the part I mean I can spend some time but maybe start up something else and uh, uh, Spotify was, was something that I thought of for for a long time mm -hmm. I, I then I asked Cho and we come up the first thing is the structure that one I think I shared on Twitter and then I also tag Annex and yeah I, yeah. yeah I remember that conversation because it, it comes up a lot about um, how people structure their uh, Annex workspaces and of course the the depending on who you talk to the answer is going to be different but uh, you did share your general structure of how you uh, kind of laid out the application but yeah go ahead yeah, yeah yeah so yeah so it is the first step uh, i'll just have a call with joe and then we uh, like conclude the, the the structure for nx and then i think it's like could be uh, applied for any like project with netjs and angular so mm -hmm. i made a note on on Git so that maybe some people can can look into so that one is like come first but at the same time i was starting writing code for spotify mm -hmm. at the same time and the I yeah, just so spent you got some the time on that? scam. Yeah, I'm just looking in there to see you got the scams in there, <laughs> scams in there also. I know that's a, I I don't know. It's a, it's another one of those things where, uh, it's a preference that uh, it's a preference that I like to use, uh, in Angular apps for building. You know, combining the component module together. But yeah. Mm, mm, yeah, I also like this is like kind of the first thing that I use in scam. Um. Again, I saw people was using it, and then mm -hmm. maybe you know, it's 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 just a fresh project, and it is just a side project. Maybe I can apply it. Um, so it was asking like why I start the Spotify. So again, come to come back to the question um, to learn Annex. First thing, very important. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know that's uh, what people are talking about. We should know all this and uh, the same question like Have you ever seen uh, a completed Client Spotify view with Angular. I never seen it. So mm -hmm. I think Angular is capable of doing a lot more than that, but just we never seen it. So the guy my thought, you know, only React can do something like that. So I think you know, Yeah, we React usually gets the, the the fancy shiny things and then Angular is like in a button up suit most of the time. <laughs> it's just kinda of showing that Angular can do some of the, the fun stuff too. Yeah. And the uh if we have a, a real world application, I mean Spotify was like look like a, a, an app that we are using every day. So maybe the guy can look into the the way we structure the code and got some idea from it. Because you know, mm -hmm. looking into how what we are using every day look like and how it's built is, is kind of important to maybe related to what we are doing. Um, so doing a clone is easy to um, like. Like on the design, I don't have to worry much on the design because it's there, um, mm -hmm. and the requirement is also the same. I I using it like mostly every day, so I know what is expecting on the final result. So there's a play button, there's a list, and there's a album and 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 some kind of stuff. Design is important as well. I don't have to do a Photoshop or Figma because I also not good on into that space as well. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah and i do some live stream after that so it's like continuation of uh uh angular spotify after the first version so i just keep building after the first one yeah mm -hmm. basically that's a few reasons for starting spotify uh, there was a quick question in the chat do you the, is the gist link 
on uh, your repo or can you or is that something or is that what the uh, well that was on the readme of the project right that was on uh, the gist or was it the structure that you showed earlier oh the gist I think is on inside the uh, inside the repo okay. um, just just give me one I can just do a quickly look into it well you can we'll just share the link to the repo in the in the chat here that all yeah, it's like you come down a bit. I see there's a, okay. I can just copy and paste into the chat. Yeah, yeah that'll work. Actually, I can just send it to you and you can send it to everyone. I think I don't, I don't log in, so I cannot comment it directly. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, sure. So you can also find it below in the principal, I think. Or I forgot. Yeah, I also included it into the repo. I think it's like people win interested about this. Uh. Yeah, so you were, yeah you were talking about the um, kind of going through the the requirements and design and things. So did you what what kind of um, so basically you just look? Well, I get okay. Let's jump into the first another question. Okay. You you use this instead of the Spotify client when you're just uh, like working and stuff, or do you? Uh, do you use a mix of both? Oh, I think I have two here. Um, I think the Spotify client, that's, I mean, my Spotify, the Angular Spotify, mm -hmm. there's one limitation, which is there's no pagination. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, if it's like get out of the, the range, I need to use my, my own Spotify, <laughs> my, mm -hmm. my original Spotify app to, to play music. Because the list on the left is the playlist and it can give me maximum, I think it's like 50 playlists. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, I, yeah, I didn't put enough time to put the infinitive scrolling behavior. So it just giving me <laughs> the first 50 and then it's not mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> okay, well, you, gotta, so you, I was must of, uh, you must have a lot of playlists if you, <laughs> if you can't get to the, the first. The yeah, first yeah, I think, I, think yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> More than hundred, I would say. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was using mix, and uh, sometimes I like to have the visualizer. It's like when I not really using the computer, I just play the the this thing like full screen, mm -hmm. all in. Yeah, you can double click and then it just do all in, and then you see the blinking when you go back to the desk. It's kind of uh, interesting to see. Yeah, but yeah, I was uh, it, using mix. I cannot use only my app. <laughs> it's not completed yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's okay. Uh, you st but I would say you, st you still have a good, uh, good set of features there um, that you have built around this. So, as far as well, we got a course child in the, in the chat. He said, "When does it support a free Spotify account?" <laughs> so I guess that's something another, another feature. Uh, um, have to add, uh, look at adding in the future. Um, okay, so that's that that question. I think I mentioned it, it somewhere uh, because on the web playback SDK, um, uh -huh. oh, they said yeah. that yeah you need to have a premium. So it is like prerequisite from Spotify itself. Uh, Until yeah, they support it, then I can do it. Mm -hmm. So Chow, you got to talk to Spotify, and yeah, uh, okay, we need to talk to Craig and uh, <laughs> Craig. Be like Craig, we need free Spotify support. So. Uh, maybe he can make that happen. I'm not, I'm not uh, signing him up for anything. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> but yeah, talk. Up, can you talk about like you went with? Uh, well, yeah, you saved time on requirement and design. Can you talk about how you were experimenting like with the NX workspace and what kind? Because you said this was the first time you actually used yep. uh, NX for for this. So can you kind of kind of like talk about some of the things that you kind of ran into, or maybe places that it helped, or even places that it wasn't as smooth? Um, sure. I think I have a code open here. So basically, just let me zoom in a bit. Oh wow, it's kind of hang, but I think we can still have some glimpse. Um, yep. I think the one of the first thing I was encounter was like, I don't have a solid structure in mind, because. Um, I also very new to scam, uh, like single angular component, and mm -hmm. the idea is like we wanted to have xlib um, 
to contain only one module and one component. And I was very confused. So I was just at the beginning, I create like a lot more library and then I put stuff into. But mm. gradually I, I realized it might be not a good way. So one of the things I was using a lot was doing the, is it like the move uh, schematic? So I can move the yeah. library around. Yeah. So I will spend like at least a few days just to create a library, putting some component into it and then move it to another places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's yeah, like the, need to get a few a few times try here. <laughs> yeah, I'll say the move the uh, move generator definitely comes in handy when you're uh, kind of tinkering around with like file structure and uh, things like that to be able to you know you can generate a library one place and then it'll take care of all of the like the renaming and yep. where it's being imported and all that. So yeah, yeah, that's very handy. Um, that's the first one. Um, the second one, I think. There's a lot of boilerplate and um, because there's one problem, maybe I can show you. I mean, it's kind of hang, but uh, in, so I was using the package, they call it um, Spotify API, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, giving some kind of typing uh, interface and type. So it's just from the type uh, um, like uh, namespace. And mm -hmm. when I was trying to use it into uh, a library, like um, uh, a data access library because like when I start to make API code and stuff, it just doesn't recognize the all of the type coming from this one. And I was spending a few times. So at the beginning, I was like putting a triple dot, a triple slash um, mm -hmm. to reference directly. So I, I explicitly saying I need this type, but doing it over and over was kind of weird because, you know, it's can be required in many different components and places and mm -hmm. doing triple slash uh, it just doesn't work um, so I think at the end I found the issue with because inside the tsconfig.lib I think by default there was a type array and this was empty and somehow oh, this right. type array empty was overriding stuff and then I just remove it and yeah it's work after that it just worked so even now, when I create a new data access library, maybe I still need to go into tsconfig.lib and then remove the type empty mm -hmm. array. Yeah, that is the second so one. So did you I look was. at, so you say you have to do that each time, or you just do that when you have to generate a new library that needs to access the um, Spotify API types? Oh, only when I need, I, when I need to access to the Spotify API. The t mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. Not okay. for every single library. It's just yeah. when I need to access to the add type slash Spotify API, then mm -hmm. I need to do one more step. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So that that is the second one. I think pretty much that's it. Uh, I don't have a lot of issue using NX. So I was migrating it a few times, and I think it's also very handy. Uh, usually, it's kind of working pretty well. Cho mm -hmm. was doing a, a few commits here. Yeah? Like, I see that Cho was a, few, a month ago. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see, he, he's in there uh, managing the migrations and things. So, do yes, you? Uh, so, do you? I guess on that note, do you? I guess you manage this like pretty much like a regular kind of like. Well, I guess open source aside, you manage this like a regular project where you try to keep it up to date and. Um, uh, for like contributors and even for just like yourself, right? Like yep. you, I'm a, you, you're on the Angular 12, so I'm assuming that you're, you're pretty relatively up to date. So since that's the latest version, but do you actively like maintain this um, application? I know you probably got a good amount of contributors at this point too, but kind of how, do you, is that part of what you do these days as far as keeping it up to date and everything? Um, I think yeah, I was still looking into the maybe usually Angular version release. Like if there's a major one, mm -hmm. and then there's if I think it's following after a few days or a week, and then I will do it for for the project. But uh, usually I will not look into it uh, too frequent. I would say so. So mm -hmm. if there's like Angular twelve point something, I might not look into it yet because if I don't use it, maybe not. Not is it's not the time for me to do a yeah. upgrade. Yeah. yeah, I think that's pretty pretty standard. Um, unless you 
like I said, unless you are on like the regular like NX release, unless you follow those release cycles also, uh, you usually uh, probably stay on the um, the major the major release um, versions until like the next one comes out. Yep. Uh, but yeah, even even like I said, even if you did, you could migrate a little more frequently if you if you wanted to. But um, yeah, I think staying on the the majors is a pretty pretty solid bet there because you don't get too much too much churn as far as trying to maintain those upgrades and things. So yeah, but I would say like just want to add a side note because the upgrade process because this project was not like a massive uh, mono repo so only one project so mm -hmm. to run an upgrade with NX was kind of very easy you know just do a command we all know about this i don't want to do a <laughs> to <laughs> talk too much into it but uh yeah with angular and NX is really easy to to do an upgrade with um you know like maybe like do a minor version could be really quickly we can get into mm -hmm. it but yeah it cool. just um yeah needs some time <laughs> So you do you still get a lot of like active uh, contributors or I saw well we already had the <laughs> the request for the free Spotify but that that's not something you can you control per se. Um, let's see if we have any other questions here in the chat. Uh, let's see, they had a question. Notice you're using Ant Design but also Tailwind. Do you think it's a good pattern um, mm. by using a UI kit and a U and a util kit? Oh okay, I see. Um, uh, in this question, thanks, thanks, Roslyn, for the question. I think in the application, Tailwind this kind of help you to build all of the the look and feel. Mm -hmm. But um, the end design was like it come up with a lot of component, like structure component, like for some kind of the model. You might not want it to build it from the scratch because. There's a lot more you scale to handle, like when you type it on the keyboard or when you click out the background or when you do like wanted to do a you know, scrolling within the model or outside the model. All of that if you need to build a model from scratch is gonna take a lot of time, even mm -hmm. with tailwind. So and design was like I was just mostly using the component that I need from end design and tailwind was the one that I was using to structure and customize the component. Mm -hmm. So, I would say using Tailwind alone might not be enough uh, in some use case, or you need to spend a lot of time building component. Um, so combination of both. I mean, it's like introduce uh, more like third party dependency, and we also need yeah. to you know upgrade it and and maintain it. But in in if your your requirement need to you know get out quickly and then. We need to make our boss happy. Uh, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have a lot of choice. Well, there. who's the who's the boss? You're the boss on this project. I mean, you can choose. Uh, yeah, yeah. For me, that's fine. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I would say, if you have Angular material and you have Tailwind, this mm -hmm. could be like well working together. It should be okay, in my mm -hmm. personal opinion. Yeah. So have you? try working with Angular Material and Tailwind together or is it just something you kind of tinkered around with? I never really have it. So uh, in the two projects on Jira Clone and on Spotify, it's mainly uh, and design and uh, Tailwind. But I think with mm -hmm. Angular Material, it's going to be the same anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. You just kind of use it, use it yeah. where you can. More or less the same. So I will mean, probably just take Material I'll take the tool tip from material. I take the model from material. I mm -hmm. do some, you know, uh, custom uh, UI with material. Maybe custom team. And for my component, I'm still using Tailwind. Maybe. Yeah, I got That's you. That's how what what I I thought in mind. Maybe it's not the best though. I'll don't take my body. <laughs> <laughs> take it with the the grain of soul. <laughs> yeah, I got you. But it works. Yeah. It, you say it. I mean, yeah. I think the biggest thing is that it's possible to do and at least like I said you've got all the, got all this working within an NX workspace that has a good uh, structure and something that you can share or something that's out there that other people can look at which I think is is a definitely a big positive there also um, how long how long did it take you to initially get off get the angular Spotify clone 
off the ground like when you started because you like I said you had some experience with the Jira clone and then you kind of took a different approach with this one uh, so did it take you about maybe about the same amount of time to get the initial uh, version out before you like started sharing it and things um, yeah it took me like a month to get the first version because I mean like if I was focusing maybe it doesn't take a month Mm -hmm. But um, the reason was it's very close to the uh, Lunar New Year, which is a big holiday for the Asian country, like mm -hmm. including Singapore and Vietnam. So I was not, I mean, I was in holiday mood, so I just, I, mean, I wanted to, <laughs> to get something out. I wanted to, you know, spend three, four days during the holiday because I cannot go back to my country. So I stay in mm -hmm. Singapore. So I think within a three or four day off, I can do a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it uh, just see. doesn't come out. I see what's going on here because this is something that I do also when during the holidays is I pick <laughs> side projects to <laughs> side projects to work on and uh, kind of ideas to churn out uh, while I do have a, a few moments of uh, spare time during that time. So yeah, I'm, I'm right. I'm right on board with you there. Okay, sure, thanks. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good to know that there's people like me out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, how to say, um, so I think initially it, it took me about two weeks to play around with Annex and, you know, to try different idea, to structure it differently, like mm -hmm. create a different library and then just moving things around, try different stuff, add an NGI, add Tailwind, just do some like configuration, very foundation. Um, I start to do the, the authentication, I think, after the week two and after the week four. I think by the end of week four, I was almost ready to do the initial release. So that is the tweet that I was mentioning on Twitter. So it's like the launch. So after, I think, four weeks and uh, I was using an extension to keep track of how long, how much time that I type into the keyboard. And for the Spotify itself, it's like taking about VS Code alone was almost 40 hours. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's not like I was like, if you convert it into a day job, it's like five days of work, but it's just not that easy. You know, it's like you need yeah. to go back and slip into it and then the <laughs> next day you <laughs> come back. So I would say around a month of work. Um, mm -hmm including reading and because it's just a side project so it's not a full-time full-time job yeah it took me about a month for the first first launch okay cool so yeah you mentioned that it's not uh, a full-time job well, we had a couple of questions there but we'll get to those in a second um but yeah you mentioned it's not not a full-time job to do this so how do you how do you balance like building these big side project because this i'll say this pretty big side project to build like the spotify uh ui uh basically redo it in angular uh so how do you balance doing that like with your full-time job do you take any of these things that um you you learn building these projects and use them at work or how do, how do you do that um so it's um uh, like the story was a bit flip side because at work um I was mostly using React nowadays. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So when I got back home, I start to, I mean, I mean, not got back home. It's like when I finished the work, mm -hmm. uh, at work, I will start doing Spotify, which is Angular. So I do <laughs> React, Dayline, Angular, Nighttime. So it's kind of... <laughs> oh, okay. So you're doing, uh, <laughs> you're doing React in the front and Angular, <laughs> Angular in the, in the, in the back, I see. You, 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 you got Angular behind the behind the curtain when you get off work and then show up with the uh, show up to do the React stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, how to say? I think to balance it is it's very difficult at the beginning when I start to build Spotify because you know when you start something it is one of the most difficult um, like period of time mm -hmm. because everything was just like there's nothing there. Um, everything was empty even when I start I start to create an annex structure by running a command then I just call it a day and then go to sleep <laughs> so the next day I create maybe a two three leap and then moving around and the next day the same so the, the, the amount of work when I put in in the first 
maybe two weeks was very like minimal. Mm-hmm. I just didn't get a lot of motivation. But when I start jumping into the authentication part and then start to look into the documentation and when I make the first successful call to the Spotify API and there's some UI on the screen, it's like when I got a lot more motivation. That's why the later two work are uh, two weeks of work like mostly everything was done within two weeks. Um so Sometimes it's very like challenging as well because uh, if I don't have enough time, like w- if I was running into some trouble at work, I cannot like spend maybe like commit to two hours every night to commit into uh, Angular Spotify. Mm-hmm. But because it's just a side project, so I am okay with that. I don't have a, a hard deadline to commit. So if I cannot move on to the night, I'll just you know, go to the next day and then try to put something in. But at the end, I, I think to really to finish something at a side project, you just need to commit um, every day at least a period of time into it. So mm-hmm. it makes it feel like you're doing it every day and then you, you're very consistent. Otherwise, it's, it's easy to slip out of the track and then maybe <laughs> you, you see it in maybe six months later. Um, mm-hmm. And because I was working from home, so I saved a lot of time on commuting. That's why, you know, maybe I end a work at maybe 6, 7 p.m. I have dinner, I have I, I took shower, maybe I go exercise. When I get back home, I still have maybe spare and maybe one or two hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how yeah, I it's definitely, definitely good to have that. Uh, definitely good to have that balance uh, there with side projects like these and not eat away, let them eat away at all your, all your time and everything like that. So how did you... Like using NX with the scam approach, how did that uh, work out as far as, did you like that approach as far as having each library, I guess, or uh, generating like multiple libraries using that approach or did you find any like friction there or, or what? Mm, I think it worked pretty okay to me. Um, I was complaining a lot about VS Code because it just doesn't work, the import of VS Code. I mean, maybe it's not VS Code for, I don't know, it just, maybe my computer, there's some problem, but basically when I have a lot of library and then when I look for a name, it mm-hmm. just, it couldn't give me a, a right suggestion, which very, you know, frustrated because, you know, if we sp- splitting the, the, the module into different module and then I need a few different components which means different module within a new module, within a new leaf. Mm-hmm. I need to import them. And if the suggestion doesn't work, you need to do it manually, which means you do import yeah. something from add angular Spotify slash slash slash, which is very <laughs> weird. Um, that is one of the downside. Um, and yeah, we already got uh, Chow uh, in the chat, of course, so he's trying to get you off VS Code. <laughs> He said you still sounds like you're still holding on to that, uh, hold on to that too. So I, I use VS Code also, so you gotta still gotta hold on for the the few of us that aren't the or the ones that aren't uh, WebStorm users anyway. Yeah. Um. So this is one of the downside. It doesn't make the dev experience, you know, um, feel like you are really writing code because it's just very tedious, and mm-hmm. especially when I do live stream because you need to write code fast and no mm-hmm. mistake and then when you do import it's just very tedious uh, process uh, apart from it I think it's worked pretty well I, I, I like it I like the, the scam uh, structure mm-hmm. uh, because like I think I realize the benefit of it because if you because with NX AI understanding the granular level was only library so if we was like about to have a single component within the library and we're writing a lot of tests for this component mm-hmm. and if we change it if we need to change it we might we need to just only run the test affected for this library itself which is very efficient mm-hmm. um, because i don't do tests i cannot like say it confidently but i think that's how i understand the benefit when we split it into a smaller smaller part that's uh, the idea behind and i hope i can just do you know maybe add some tests into and then maybe really see the benefit when we break it down so that I can show it to other people that that is very 
useful mm -hmm. and I think the effective way that you should follow maybe yeah so on on that note as far as using the affected or NX and affected um, you say you do you kind of do react at work right so are you have you looked at kind of translating that um, your usage of NX over to the react world or have you like experimented with that any so oh. you can get some of those same benefits there um i haven't really tried uh, react with any mm, mm -hmm. yeah i i might maybe i should do it soon somehow <laughs> um, because in the context of spotify i wanted to add another application maybe the mobile app or something which mm -hmm. is very like minimal one but because it's angular so maybe i should use native script or i don't know maybe i want it easier if I introduce React Native, uh, yeah, you, you it could. just doesn't feel. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's feel like you you have all of the share mod like component, and yeah. then I can reuse it in both web app and the native app like by native script maybe easier. If I introduce React Native, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if you wanted like I would say if you were. Uh, if you if you had a more maybe more of a general name for the project, I would say mm. it would probably make more sense there. Yeah, yeah. Since you you kind of you've already gone down the Angular Spotify <laughs> path there, so I think. But yeah, I do think that adding like like you said an Ionic or like a mobile or native script uh, application like as a separate thing, I think definitely think that would be uh, doable there, and you could kind of reuse some of those. Uh, pieces that you already have like you mentioned there yep but yeah definitely a lot of like i said a lot of good patterns and um things in there to look through for uh like i said people are looking for an angular application that does you know actual authentication and uh handles logging into the spotify client or even maybe not even just a spotify client just like logging into external services in general I know mm. that's a good thing that um, that people should be accustomed or should should learn about doing. So definitely a lot of good stuff in there. And then you mentioned the um, the Angular Singapore uh, meetup. I guess it, is it is it a meetup or is it more of just like a series uh, series that you're doing? Um, how to say? I think um, my idea when I create uh, create Angular Singapore was like. I didn't see an Angular community active in Singapore, so that's why I started it. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea was just to maybe have... So the main activity was every month I tried to invite a speaker, maybe because now is the pandemic time and mm -hmm. uh, we cannot do it physically. So I just invite all of the uh, speakers from around like the community. So I was inviting Minko, I was inviting um, some other people to come and talk every month. The second one I was trying to do was doing some live stream, like really like when you see other people writing code, mm -hmm. this was really helpful because it's just not how you write a code. It's like uh, how you using the tooling, how you using the editor, like the VS Code. Maybe you have some trick that uh, other people they just never yeah. notice. Yeah, that is that is something interesting to see when I watch other people writing code. So that is the second one. The third one was, I was just set up a, a booking link so that if anyone have any question, you can just book a, a, a meeting. I think it's like, I, I got a feeling a few years ago when I started with Angular 2, I have a lot of questions in my, well, I don't know who to ask because I'm the only front end in the team. And okay. uh, it was just, you know, it's, it's just maybe sometime I need just someone to, to explain the, the problem. And maybe mm -hmm. during the, the process of explaining things, it might help me to find a solution, but I just don't have any. Um, so I, I set it up and then people can just book a 15 minute meeting and they can just talk about maybe anything, anything technically. You okay, so, that's, yep. so it's not necessarily the live stream there, it's still more, or you, they can just book some time to kind of pair, I guess pair with you per se. Yep. just kind of talk about things that are like I said development stuff that they may be trying that they have run into that's pretty cool yeah yep, yep. yeah I like that idea I might have to I might have to uh, 
<laughs> Might have to to peel for that one. Okay, uh, since we are here, I'll just uh, uh show it yeah, quickly. Yeah, feel free. That's uh Angela Singapore. I'll just send it into the chat. Yeah, if you'll share the yeah share the link there, that we'll get Twitter. that into the chat um, also. So I I put the I pin the note here. So basically, the talk to us anything. The first line is the link that you can book a meeting. Um, that's the one cleanly. Just mm -hmm. click in to see the slot. Uh, I usually available in the morning, but if you don't see the slot because I just said it for Singapore time zone. So you, you need a special, you know, <laughs> time, time. <laughs> you need to uh, send a message. But yeah, I welcome anyone if you got any comment or question. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so yeah, I think we're, uh, I think that's a good, good place to end off there. We did have some questions in the chat and we will capture the questions that we didn't get to answer uh, today um and uh capture those for next time uh if we let's you know check to make sure there any or any other ones that we can answer today or if you if you have if you do have another question feel free to join the the slack channel um for the um, uh join the slack channel for the nx community i'm going to paste that link in here also uh, if you have any other further questions that maybe we didn't answer here, uh, definitely join there. We got over 2,000 people in there now. Uh, so shout out to Jay Bell and the rest of the uh, community there who organized that. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I'll say once again, thank you for coming on and talking about uh, the Angular Spotify client there. And... Um, like I said, we will, I'll definitely have to keep up on the project because I'm going to, I had tried, I believe I, you know, clicked on the link and everything, but I'm definitely going to try it out. I'm going to, I do some live streams on Twitch uh -huh. also. Uh, so I'm going to try it out and see if I can uh, integrate it into the, into the stream there. Cause I just mainly use it for like, I said, playing music through the, playing music through the, during the stream. So I think it could, I think it could work there since it does pretty much does the same things that the, um, the standalone player does so if we can use the web version i'll definitely get that a try sure thanks. yeah thanks for everyone that came out uh for hanging out in the chat uh like i said you can we posted the community page there you can join us there uh you can follow um follow nx on twitter at nx dev tools uh definitely check out the docs and stuff and everything and everything at nx.dev and we look forward to talking to everyone next time. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me.